what it is. I am Controlled Pairs. This is Controlled Pairs Gaming, and welcome to the first episode of the LKO Show, my sandbox save in Kerbal Space Program. You guys know I don't do career mode. I just don't have the patience for it. But I am starting this save in sandbox mode where I can kind of build off of some projects rather than just doing these one-time showcases that I've been doing. I know you guys are liking the, the tutorials a lot, so I'll keep that up, but this is going to be my main focus for KSP. Um, so our first mission here, we're going to put the Control Pairs Space Station core into orbit at about 95 kilometers above Kerbin. That's why it's called the LKO show. We are doing a low Kerbin orbit show, at least for the first few episodes. We're going to focus on this space station construction, and uh, maybe later on we'll push out to the moon and start setting up some mining bases and a moon base and stuff like that. But um, for now, I really want to build this space station. So what you're looking at right now is the Control Pairs Space Station core. It is a living module capable of housing four ker uh, Kerbals right here in the Hitchhiker storage container. Additionally, it has a remote guidance unit, so it has a, uh, a command and control function. It also has an SAS module for additional control, and it stores a small amount of fuel as well as a large amount of RCS. Uh, additionally, it has multiple solar arrays so that it can begin generating power immediately, as well as some lighting and most importantly, it has places for other parts of the space station to later on come and dock. I haven't completely finished drawing out what I plan to do for the entire space station, but you can see I've got four docking nodes here as well as one is on the each of each solar on the end of each solar array. Um, so lots of room to grow. Now let's go ahead and put this thing in orbit. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, engine ignition. Three, two, one, liftoff. And we have liftoff of the controlled pair space station core. Bob Kerman is on board. He is in the hitchhiker container. It is being piloted from the ground via the remote guidance unit. And we have liftoff. So you can see that the launch stage here in the actual lifting vehicle came out and actually looked pretty good. Because the space station itself was so long, I managed to make a pretty good looking fairing sit on top of those, um, those giant engines there. And this was just as much a test of the space station and its ability to actually be launched as it was for the launch vehicle itself. And these rockets actually came out and ended up being pretty efficient and pretty effective at delivering a massive payload to low carbon orbit. And so I think I'm going to stick with a similar design as far as the launch vehicle is concerned as you watch the separation of stage 2 and those liquid fuel boosters. I've left the majority of the launch stage in here just because I think it looks really, really good and uh, it's a good example of how to launch massive payloads that just weigh a ton and are incredibly top heavy. Although, here in a few minutes you do see a small mistake that I made when I initiated my gravity turn and I got a little bit overzealous with the pitch and ended up toppling just a tad, as you are about to witness, which, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing, but it is what it is, and let's be real, it's Kerbal Space Program, we all have issues like these all the time, it's just the nature of the beast, and this goes to show you that I am nowhere near perfect, and I make mistakes just like everybody else who plays this game. But as soon as I did see myself start to topple, I killed the engine so I didn't make the topple any worse, and I regained control using SAS and RCS and continued my gravity turn. Let's talk a little bit about the state of the game as far as KSP is concerned. I'm really happy with the way that the community has grown since the release of 1.0, and if you're a longtime fan of the series, I'm sure that you are too. There's been a lot of great activity on the forums, and I've been having people contact me, asking me questions about how they can get better at the game and, and what the secret to success is. And I'm certainly not successful as far as the game's concerned. I can barely play career mode, but what I love about KSP is how creative it allows the players to be. And you're really only limited by the scope of your imagination. You get so many awesome ideas from other people and just failing and experimenting on your own, and I think that's what's most appealing about it. And I think that's why I like Sandbox more than career mode because you have room to make those mistakes and just come up with these outrageous designs and it's just a blast and um, and, and so I'm just I'm really pleased with the way that the game has progressed over the last month especially with the huge influx of players and the ridiculous at um, the ridiculous add-ons and, and um, not just mods but the inclusion of all these crazy new parts engines modules and just all this ridiculous stuff that's come with the release of 1.0 something I'm really happy about and 
You might be asking, you know, why I decided to make a space station for the very first mission in the LKO show. That's because, one, space stations kick ass. I mean, there's a natural progression I think a lot of people go for when they start playing KSP. The first thing is, how do I build a rocket? How do I get to the orbit? Then it's, how do I get to the moon? Then it's, how do I do an orbital rendezvous? And at some point, once you've mastered all of those skills, you're like, dude, I want to make a space station. And what I think makes uh, having a space station a really unique opportunity, particularly in sandbox mode, is it leads to so many awesome follow-on missions. So once we get the space station core up there, we can follow on by bringing additional modules of the space station up to LKO and docking with it. So now we're doing an orbital rendezvous, we're doing building in outer space, and we're doing these crazy docking maneuvers. It gives you the opportunity to do some really cool EVA stuff, and it later on will give me the opportunity to build shuttles and SSTOs that can come up and do all these crazy takeoffs and landings and orbital rendezvous. So it really just opens the door for a ton of really cool missions that I see happening down the road. And I know it feels like I'm just rambling, but I'm just super pumped about this series and about what KSP is doing right now as we watch the separation of this fairing. It looks so freaking awesome. Gosh, I love that. Fairings, another addition with the new KSP stuff, man, with the release of 1.0. It just looks outstanding. So we have successfully separated our fairings. We have pushed our apoapsis up to 90. Is it 90? I think it's 90 clicks above the surface of Kerbin. Oh, it was 95, excuse me. And, uh, and we're starting to pick up horizontal velocity and plan our circularization burn. And we're almost to the point where we have the controlled pair space station in orbit around Kerbin with follow-on missions ready to go. And actually, um, when I was planning this circularization burn, I think anytime I, I do a maneuver node, I try to make it so perfect. And then when I actually start the burn, it goes nothing like the maneuver node was projecting. I mean, I'll, I'll end up making it look the same, but as far as like beginning before the burn and actually uh, igniting my engines and then continuing after the node, I screwed up so much, man. And especially with this thing, it's a huge launch stage. I've got this giant engine on the ass end of this thing, and it's incredibly top heavy. So I'm planning this maneuver node and KSP is like, all right, if you fire your engines before the, the, the node at full throttle, this is how long it's going to take you to burn. And I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll just do that, right? So I orient on the maneuver node, that blue mark on my nav ball, engage SAS, fire my engines, and regret it immediately because look how much this thing sways. Like, that is not safe at all. So I have to throttle it way back to like 10%, but there's still so much thrust being generated in that massive launch stage that I can easily generate the velocity in order to circularize and set my orbit right at 95 clicks above the surface. Um, so it wasn't a complete failure. It, it got a little bit dicey there for a second, and um, I'm glad it didn't completely fall apart, though that would have made for a pretty good blooper reel all in all. So after firing the engine, we saw plenty of thrust, plenty of fuel remaining to get this thing circularized. Because I overshot the maneuver node and I wasn't able to fire the engines to 100%, I end up circularizing the old-fashioned way by jumping out to the map view and then controlling my thrust with respect to the apoapsis in order to keep my um, orbit, orbit right at 95 kilometers. And I was able to do that pretty successfully. I am proud of the skills that I have developed since uh, the very beginning of Kerbal Space Program, before maneuver nodes existed. I remember when docking was, uh, not docking, I remember when orbits were implemented, you know, and um, the game's just come so far and it's wild to see what was an early access game in 2012, now in full release with a massive player base and all these ridiculous capabilities. It's, uh, it's incredibly impressive and I am glad that I had been here for the entire time. So now we've managed to circularize the orbit, and it's perfect, man, right at 95 kilometers, uh, so much so that the apoapsis and the perapsis are bouncing around on our orbit trying to get to the other side, but it is, if not perfectly circular, as damn near it as you can possibly get. So then we separate our space station from our launch stage, and we extend the solar panels and we turn on the lights and we open the service bay and this thing is officially in operation. And it looks absolutely outstanding. I'm very pleased with the initial launch of the controlled pairs space station. All that's left to do now is take Bob Kerman out on EVA and return our launch stage. Thanks for tuning into this episode, guys. If you found it enjoyable, please subscribe to my channel. Greatly appreciate it. And until next time, this is Controlled Pairs, signing off.